Now, homeowners in Philadelphia are suing the city over something called a civil forfeiture law. Now, what is that? Well, it's basically a way for the government to take your home, even if you as a homeowner have never been convicted of a crime. Now, CNN did, did an extensive report on this. Let's watch a few of those clips, and then I want to go into the panel's reaction to it. Without warning, Soravella says Philadelphia police and prosecutors seized his house. I was going nuts. So, so what, what, what do you mean? He and his wife, Markella, have never been charged with a crime or even accused of any wrongdoing. Police arrested their 22-year-old son, Yanni, on drug charges, $40 worth of heroin, and claim he was selling drugs out of the home. Police and prosecutors came armed with a lawsuit against the house itself. It was being forfeited and transferred to the custody of the Philadelphia District Attorney, all because of their son's first offense drug charges. Yanni pleaded no contest. You have a family member that you don't know is, is doing drugs, and they get caught, and somehow, because of that, you can lose your home. Now, already, this sounds pretty disastrous. What do you guys think? Well, I mean, it's almost, I mean, the common term, I think it's kind of sins of the father. And you just think, well, it's kind of sins of the son in this case. He hasn't been charged with anything. They just kind of, they think that he might have been selling this $40 amount of heroin from his home. You know, they, they don't have any evidence that he's doing that. It's just, it's amazing that the allowed to simply just charge the parents with what their son might have, might or might not have been doing. It's incredible. There, there's more to that CNN story. Let's uh, see another clip. The Soravella's family is not alone. In two years, nearly 500 families in Philadelphia had their homes or cars taken away by city officials, according to Pennsylvania's Attorney General. They use a civil forfeiture law that allows them to seize people's property, saying they have probable cause that it's somehow connected to illegal drugs. The general core of the civil forfeiture law is to capture the cash or ill-gotten gains or contraband that criminals have used to commit a particular crime. But unlike criminal forfeiture, the civil law allows authorities to seize property without the owner ever being convicted or even charged. Civil forfeiture is something that is an assault upon fundamental notions of private property ownership and due process. Philadelphia officials over a 10-year period have seized more than 1,000 houses, about 3,300 vehicles, and $44 million in cash in civil forfeitures, according to the lawsuit. And a large chunk of that money goes straight to salaries for the Philly DA's office and the police, about $7 million in just three years, according to state records. And look how much they put toward community drug and crime fighting programs. Zero. Wait, what? Zero? Zero towards drug and crime fighting programs. Isn't that amazing? But wait, we haven't even seen the worst part of this. Here in Philadelphia, if you have your property taken, you can come here to City Hall and go to courtroom 478 and try to get it back. Problem is, the people that are taking the belongings are also the ones calling the shots inside the courtroom. So the very people taking your stuff in the first place are the ones you have to deal with in order to get your stuff back. There's no judge, just the prosecutor that holds all the cards. Now, this, this is one of the obvious problems that's connected 100% to the drug war. And this allows this to happen to people who, by themselves, haven't done anything, they haven't done anything wrong, and, and as the report says, it's a huge moneymaker for the cities that actually do this, as well as a violation of due process. You guys, what do you guys think about this? Yeah, so talk about incentivizing police departments, but uh, man, so all this is over $40, like, the kid didn't even plead guilty, right? Like, Sean will, can correct me if I'm wrong here, but, like, no contest does not equal guilty. That means that you are not admitting guilt, but you uh, don't believe that you have enough counter evidence to defeat the state's argument against you or whatever. Like, it's not a guilty plea. So not only did his parents, who got the house seized, were, did they, were they not found guilty, the actual kid wasn't even found guilty. It was a no contest plea. And because of it, all this property has gone. This, this is just another case of another example showing the pointless war on drugs and 
you know, Jordan's point about the incentivization. That's possibly, I think, the, the worst part of this. If I think if you took that part out, kind of the prosecutors weren't getting paid for taking away these people's homes and stuff, then it would still be bad, but it, it'd be nowhere near as bad. The fact that there's this incentivization, I think, is a multiplier effect on the real callousness of the entire situation that's going on in Philadelphia. Uh, yeah, t two things. One, uh, no contest plea literally means no contest. Like, it's not technically a guilty plea, but you're admitting to all of the facts of the case, and usually that's in hopes of a more lenient sentence. So, like, he's admitting to it, but he's saying he's not guilty for some other reason, and please show leniency. But uh, my, my, my final point on, on this is that it, this is terrible. Obviously, uh, we've been doing civil forager stories um, here and there for a while, but one of the positive signs of this is that this it looks like a middle class like white family like this is in the news and it and it seems like that we're going to reach a breaking point where somebody's going to sue and and we're going to find out that this is an obvious violation of the 5th amendment like if the government wants your property there's a law called eminent domain that they have to use to take it like this um asso this association of guilt for your property that you have to go basically beg to get back is ridiculous and um, that's the one positive that hopefully this will lead to a turning point and we can get rid of civil forfeiture laws.